Good evening. We begin with breaking news tonight. It's a story 23 ABC has been covering since Tuesday night. A stabbing in downtown Bakersfield that left a woman badly injured. We were the first to bring you surveillance video of that attack. Many announcements today from the governor and from the county, and we know it's been confusing. So tonight we're getting right to it. We're going to clear it up for you. It is day six and it is a marvelous one, and that's because it is marvelous Monday. That means everybody's getting in for just five bucks. And did we mention it's 23 ABC night as well? And we are all here. Well, the Vacaville man turned to the only thing he had to put out a fire in his shop, beer. The LNU Lightning Complex was burning toward Chad Little's house early Wednesday. He had hoses reeled out around the property, but he didn't know the water was turned off, so he grabbed his Bud Light. My buddies always tease me about, uh, you know, drinking water, beer, and I say, hey, save my, my shop. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was able to put out the flames right before firefighters arrived, so I guess glad that story had a happy ending. We want to show you a live look at that fire tonight. Check that out. You can see just how big it is. If you take a look at the very bottom of your screen, you can see that those are vehicles down on the ground just for size and scope here. That is how small those vehicles look from this angle, so you can tell just how large that fire is at this hour. We asked you on our 23 ABC Facebook page if you felt tonight's earthquake and you responded very quickly. Lori, for instance, saying felt it at Fairfax and College. The weirdest earthquake I've ever felt and I've been in quite a few now other responses Andrea said felt it over on the northwest side but wasn't sure if it was an earthquake or the dog bumped the couch and that was kind of a common theme to see Bakersfield City School District's board has voted to move the first day of school to August 24th BCSD officials said they were informed Tuesday that a majority of their 30,000 students will not have access to internet connectivity due to a delay in the delivery of hotspots from their well-known internet service provider Officials say hotspots were supposed to be delivered sometime this week, but there was some sort of delay. Superintendent Doc Irvin with Bakersfield City School District says they will be unable to start school August 17th as planned. And you can't see us. There you can't you see us back here, but uh, we are dancing. We're proven. Every time a band comes by. Oh, 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 oh. And, yes. and on. And Mike on is singing. I am not. <laughs> <laughs> I just dance. We, he provides the vocals. We need to mention that. I'm trying to ignore you. Sorry. The Thompson <laughs> Band and Color Guard, 110 members wow. strong this year. Any indication that uh, these won't be taken as seriously in the future? Yeah, I asked him about that, about whether or not the staff members would be desensitized mm -hmm. to this moving forward, and he said he hopes not. He says their training has been to take every single code black or any other incident as happening as mm -hmm. real until police say that it's not. Boston, does the rail authority have any sort of timeline of when high speed trains will be up and running through the Central Valley? You're coming off an extremely hot week as we bring in 23 ABC's Allison Gargaro with a look at our forecast. It was so hot this past week and yeah. of course very dry now. Allison, obviously concern for firefighters. It definitely is. Firefighters are standing by monitoring this fire's every move. They're right here along the roadway, seeing everything that happens, and the air tankers flying up above, helping to also continue to battle this blaze. Officials are concerned with the dry weather today and lack of humidity in the area. This is benefiting a local cause, the Bakersfield Ronald McDonald House. Look at this crowd behind me. Homeowners here say they moved in behind the gates for added security, but lately it hasn't been doing much since someone crashed into this gate and then took off. State Democrats say the solution to fixing those roads is increasing the tax at the pump, but state Republicans say there's no reason you should be spending more when you're filling up your tank. All right, Callan, thanks. Now to new video obtained by 23 ABC. Tatiana Hargrove made headlines about three years ago when she was mistaken for a wanted man taken into custody and bitten by a Bakersfield police canine. Last November, she made headlines again when she was arrested for spitting in a Bakersfield police officer's food while she was working at a local McDonald's. Tonight, 23 ABC has the video showing Hargrove tampering with the officer's food and body camera video showing what she told deputies after she was placed under arrest. We do want to warn you, some of the video may be disturbing to some viewers. This surveillance video obtained by 23 ABC shows Tatiana Hargrove working at the McDonald's on Rosedale Highway and Allen Road last November. A manager called the Kern County Sheriff's Office after an employee reported Hargrove messed with the customer's food. Can I see the video? 
Deputies responded to investigate and saw this video. In it, you see Hargrove at the top of the screen drop hamburger buns onto the floor before quickly picking them up and putting them into the toaster. Once out of the toaster, she grabs one bun, rubs it on the floor, and appears to show her co-worker, Herman Trevino. She takes the other two out of the toaster and rubs another one on the ground before building the burger. A few seconds later, she grabs a patty, turns away from the camera, and appears to spit on it. She then wipes her mouth and boxes it up. You can see in this video it was served to a Bakersfield police officer. I can't talk about the story without crying. In 2017, Hargrove was arrested on charges of resisting arrest, assaulting a police officer, and interfering with a police dog. The DA's office said it dropped charges against Hargrove due to insufficient evidence. Hargrove sued the Bakersfield Police Department in federal court for excessive force and civil rights violations after she claimed she was the victim of police brutality. In October, one month before the incident happened at McDonald's, a jury ruled against her, saying the officers did not use excessive force and did not violate her rights. As deputies interviewed her co-worker who was nearby when it happened, he claimed he told Hargrove not to do it. So she dropped the buns and I thought she was just being funny. So I told her, I was like, um, don't give him those buns. And then after that... Who was in line? Hmm? Who was supposed to get that food? That was a cop. Okay. Trevino also told deputies Hargrove said expletive the police while making it. A few minutes later, he spoke to the deputy again, apologizing for his actions. At first, yeah, I was laughing, but then I told her, I was like, you should have changed the buns. Right. Like, you need to. Body camera video shows the deputy went to Hargrove's home and placed her under arrest. When questioned about the incident, this is what she told the deputy. Uh, Ma'am, I did uh, drop a burger, okay. but um, I was in a rush. So I ended up dropping a, a burger and still using it. Okay. You didn't spit on it? No, no. So I looked at the video. I dangled it. I looked over at it, but then I didn't. I didn't touch it. I dropped my. I dropped the bun multiple times. So. Okay. You didn't spit on it? No, no. When pressed further, she said she was extremely busy at the time. See, when, when you're in the back cooking and you're in a rush, like sometimes you'd be like, "Oh, okay, it's a five-second rule," which is very inconsiderate. Don't get me wrong. But um, unfortunately, I chose to make the decision, which is very odd. Hargrove was arrested and eventually charged with felony mingling harmful substances with food, misdemeanor battery on a person, and misdemeanor battery on an officer. And earlier this month, Hargrove took a plea deal to misdemeanor battery on an officer. She was sentenced to 45 days in jail, community service, and must receive mental health counseling. Hargrove turned herself in earlier this month to serve her jail time, but spent less than two weeks behind bars. As for her co-worker, Herman Trevino, he was also charged with felony mingling harmful substances with food, but took a plea deal that dismissed his charge in exchange for testimony against Hargrove at trial. He told 23 ABC Today he did not want to call comment further. We reached out to Hargrove's attorney Lexi Blythe, but have not gotten a hold of her as of news time. In the midst of all the new orders and regulations surrounding the coronavirus, many celebrations have been canceled from birthday parties to graduations to weddings. One Bakersfield couple managed to tie the knot just hours before the governor issued a stay at home order. They say it wasn't the big wedding they planned, but it was the responsible way to get married while practicing social distancing. Andrea and Jeremy Rathbone are racking up hundreds of shares on social media, the two being praised for their creativity on their wedding day. They originally were getting married on the coast April 4th, but with the coronavirus outbreak, they had a change of plans. We decided it was our responsibility to uh, call that date off uh, because we're at this point responsible to kind of help make that decision for our guests. So they pushed their wedding day up way up. And I said, we need to make a decision and pull the trigger. And she goes, let's just pull it now. And I said, all right, let's get married tomorrow. And she said, all right. Jeremy's best friend, a pastor, agreed to marry them in his backyard. So on Thursday, with Andrea's children, Jeremy's parents, and three close friends, they tied the knot. And so like most people have a guest table, and we had a sanitation station, um, just because it seemed appropriate for not just like what's going on, but just the nature of the event. Like we also took precautions. It was awesome. It was private. It was intimate. Then it was time for pictures. Local photographer Mackenzie Holler showing up with 24 hours notice, snapping these masks, gloves, and all. But it was the groom's surprise gift to the bride that sealed the deal.
And I pull out the tissue paper and open it up. And it was like a 12 pack, like a 12 pack of like extra strong quilted, double all the things, toilet paper. And I was like, you are the man. The two say initially they worried the coronavirus was a sign they shouldn't get married. But they say right after they said, I do, a perfect rainbow appeared and they knew it was meant to happen the way it did. It's a happy day. I'm not going to let what's going on right now take that away from me. And so we're going to have some really great stories to tell for the rest of our lives because of that. Yes, we are. Andrea and Jeremy say they went to pick up Thai food after taking their vows, and that's when they heard the governor had issued a stay at home order. They said they'd rather be stuck at home as Mr. and Mrs. than be stuck apart. They said they will still be holding the wedding of their dreams. It just won't be on April 4th like they planned.